Hi, I'm Jeff. And I'm Andy. And if you haven't watched our first video, you should go and do that now. I'll put a link up. And in this video, we want to take um, a few things a step further. We want to talk about a couple of features that Stop Motion Studio has. We'd like to give you a couple helpful tips uh, to make the, the videos a little smoother. And also show you how to export into iMovie and then add music and then export from there to share with friends. So if you look at the top right side of the uh, screen, you can turn on a menu and there are some options for um, speaker volume to mute it or not. Um, you can use the AWB stands for auto white balance. So sometimes what will happen is your camera will actually rebalance between frames and then some frames come out more yellow than others. Uh, if you just click on AWB, it will turn the white balance off and back on again, depending what you want. We recommend having your auto white balance turned off, and then that way your scene stays the same. Uh, it's also important to remember that your lighting sh in the room should stay the same, um, because if you are shooting near a window or something and then uh, it gets dark out, you are going to have a change of light in your scene. Okay, a couple things I'm going to do when I start this video clip. Uh, first thing is I'm going to take three frames just at the initially so that I've got a little bit of play or a little bit of leeway in terms of intro and outro transitions. So if I want to start black and fade into the scene, I don't want that to cut over actual action. So I've set up my little tree stump there. I just have those as stock. If I need to freeze frame one um, later to drag it out if I want more than than just a, a second, I can do that. I recommend uh, come over here, cut my little transitions so that I can um, see what things are going to, what's going to happen. I, I recommend I've got this character, but rather than unless he's part of the, the fixture, if he's going to be a moving character, myself, I prefer to have him walk on stage. So I have him off to the side. And then I'm going to walk him on. Now, there's a great little feature that Stop Motion Studio has, which is this little feature here underneath the record button. This is just a timer that's going to take um, shoot a frame every either 5 seconds, 10 seconds, 15, 20, 35 all the way up to a minute and a half. For our purposes though, I'm going to put this down to, I'm going to do, put it down to five seconds because I don't have too much action to do between, um, between frames. I'm not trying to move arms or anything like that. So let's see what this looks like. I'm going to move my guy once. I'm going to get this started. <clears throat> you can see that it's going around. It's going to give me that little warning to get my hands out of the way. Uh, the other thing that we should take a look at is the setting for autofocus. That's AF. If you are if you have a stationary camera, you don't need to refocus all the time. Just clicking somewhere on the screen will focus once. If you turn autofocus off, then you won't have it constantly trying to readjust as you move your hand in and then it thinks, oh, there's something close or something moving and it'll try and refocus. Just leave autofocus off because uh, if, with it on, ironically, that's when you might get some out-of-focus frames if your camera is stationary. Now that you've wrapped up your video, it's a good idea to have a few blank frames just to give yourself some time to absorb what you've just seen rather than going from straight action to straight uh, black screen or end of the video. Um, uh, once you're done your video and ready to export it, what you need to do is click on this little arrow, which will take you out here, and you can rename your movie. So my stop motion movie. If you want to click on that, you can change it to, you know, the skunk and the dog. And then once you've got that all done, you'll notice down here that I've got a duration of 15 seconds, 75 frames, and a size of 121 megabytes. Um, if we click on this uh, share button, it's the square with an arrow coming out of it, we can save to our camera roll. 
At this time, we have an option to change the size of our size and quality of our video once it's exported. So if you notice at high definition, we're going to have a file that's 11 megabytes and down here at medium 360p, we'll have a size of 5 megabytes. We recommend going with the highest quality um, unless space storage issue, uh, storage on your iPad is an issue or if you know that you're going to be emailing it and you don't want to be emailing an extra large file, you can switch down to something a little more manageable. I'm going to just click share when I've selected the format that I want and that's just going to actually save it to the iPad in the photos. It might ask you if you can access your photos the first time you go through. If you say don't allow it won't be able to save so you have to click OK and then it will save to the photos. And then click done and now we've saved our video. So we've got our video on our uh, exported and ready to go. So we're going to iMovie uh, you, what you need to do is hit the big plus to start a new project. If you if you happen to go into iMovie and you're in videos and it's got this screen, switch over to projects, then switch, uh, then press plus to start a new project. It's going to ask if you want a movie or a trailer. Select movie. Then you've got a list, a bunch of templates. Simple is the best way to go. It doesn't have any, simple actually doesn't have any template. It's just the basic. And up the top right, you click create. From here, we need to add uh, video, and if we want to add audio, we'll find it over here. So let's go to video. Uh, under recently added, you should be able to find your most recent um, thing. If you haven't, you can search it through favorites or your iMovie media or the iCloud drive if you're using any of that. But if you've just been following our steps, you'll find it in recently added. Click on your uh, video, and you see this down arrow? This down arrow actually is the button you push to whenever you want to insert media. It drops it down into your uh, timeline. Um, if we want to add music, we'll switch to the audio menu, and then we've got theme music, which are the default uh, that come with iMovie. Uh, you've got some more music from your iTunes library if you click into songs and artists and albums. And uh, we're just going to stick with the theme music today. I'm going to go with Playful. Again, you can preview. And if that's the music that you want to select, then you just push the down arrow to bring it in. And uh, it will automatically trim the music to match the length of your video if it is long enough. And uh, that's it. You're done. So if we want to export this, well, let's play it quickly here. All right, so we've got our video here, and you were ready to export it. The way you do it is just actually click Done on the top left. Make sure you actually hit it. And then you'll have the option to um, change the name of it, uh, edit it if you want to go back in and change, if you change your mind. Um, we can preview it full screen out here by clicking the Play button. And then once we're happy with it, we can export it using the share button. On the share button, we can choose to save video. That's the one we're looking for. And then you have different options of size, medium, large, or extra large. Move was exported to your photo library. And then you'll find it in your photos. Uh, one of the common questions that we had as we were putting this together was teachers wanted to know how they were finally going to present this to the class. Um, you can, if you're all iPad iPad connected, you can airdrop into a common iPad. Um, then you're still faced with that situation of, you know, potentially you could airdrop to there, create one long iMovie that showed, that showed them all. Um, but then you're presented with how you export that to show it, for example, on the uh, smart board or, or present it to the class. So what you can do is just, once you have all the videos on one iPad or if they're all on they're each individual iPads, is connect those iPads up to your desktop computer using a USB link. Uh, and then through iTunes, you can 
transfer the uh, video over and then film to use the clap on the smart board. I know that's a bit of a quick explanation, but um, if you're still having trouble, try a Google search on how to get files off of your iPad. And certainly if you haven't uh, saved a, a really massive sized file, it can also just be email. So um, if, it's, if it's a reasonable size, then you can email them and, uh, and even if you have to show them individually, uh, that works as well. And one last option is uh, you can upload your videos to YouTube or some other video sharing site. Yeah, depending on whether your class has a YouTube channel or uh, other tools like perhaps FreshGrade or something um, that could be used as a, as a common vehicle. Thanks and good luck. Thanks.